During evaluations, unusual attitudes generally consist of unexpected climbing or descending turns with increasing or decaying air speeds. Your goal as the pilot is to return safely to straight and level flight using a precise order of control inputs. Numerous examiners have indicated to me that this points to a common problem during check rides, knowing the correct order of inputs during the recovery. The pilot inputs are basically the same, but the order varies depending on whether it's a nose high or a nose low unusual attitude. Unusual attitudes can occur in a variety of situations, including botched stall recoveries, spatial disorientation, especially in IMC, autopilot failures, and plain old distractions. In an unusual attitude, airspeed is either rapidly decaying or rapidly increasing. You have to start the recovery quickly. There's not a lot of time for diagnosis. To understand unusual attitude recoveries, especially the nose low variety, you need to have a good understanding of lift vector management. So let's take a quick review of that. As we all know, the gravity vector points toward the center of the Earth. It never changes. In normal flight, the lift vector points up, opposing the gravity vector. If the lift vector is greater, the aircraft accelerates upward. If the gravity vector is greater, the aircraft ascends. In an unusual attitude, your goal is to return to straight and level flight with the lift vector pointing straight up. Now you cannot control the gravity vector, but you sure can control the lift vector. And there are two simple ways to do that. Modulate the lift vector with either airspeed or angle of attack. Increase either of those and the lift vector grows. Decrease either of those and the lift vector shrinks. Understanding this is the key to unusual attitude recovery. There are two basic types of unusual attitude that may be evaluated in private pilot check rides and flight reviews. Climbing turns with decaying airspeed and descending turns with increasing airspeed. Let's consider the climbing turn first. The nose is pitched up and airspeed is decreasing. What do you think your first concern should be? I'm thinking a stall, and if you let that get out of hand, you may end up in spin territory. There are lots of reasons to address the impending stall first. Now how about the descending turn? It's basically an unexpected spiral, and since airspeed is accelerating, what should your first concern be? How about V&E? If you let that spiral continue to develop, you may exceed V&E the never exceed speed. This could result in structural failure, and I'm not a big fan of shedding aircraft parts in flight. The recovery process from these two standard unusual attitudes contains three steps. The only tricky part is that the steps are performed in different orders. You'll have to commit them to memory and practice them to the point that they become reflex. In a climbing unusual attitude, you must first address the airspeed. It's dropping quickly and could easily result in a stall in an unstable attitude. Here's your recovery. Nose down to the horizon and add power simultaneously. After that, level the wings to return to cruise flight. In a descending unusual attitude, airspeed is, again, top priority. You're accelerating in a downward spiral, and you don't want to exceed V&E. Your recovery steps are power to idle and level the wings, then ease the nose up to level flight. The key to getting this right is understanding that in a descending unusual attitude, you level the wings first, but in a climbing unusual attitude, you level the wings last. During a check ride or flight review, it's highly likely that you'll be expected to recover from these two scenarios by reference to the instruments. In a nose high attitude, airspeed's dropping, and in a nose low attitude, airspeed's increasing. Your airspeed indicator and altimeter are important instruments for cross-reference, but if time is critical, and it probably is, the attitude indicator is all you need to start a recovery. This attitude indicator immediately shows you that your nose low. All you have to look at is the dot in the center. That's the airplane's nose. It's below the horizon, so you are in a descent. A quick look at the airspeed indicator would show that your airspeed is increasing. Instinct may tell you to pull back on the yoke or stick, but that could overstress the airplane or pull it deeper into the spiral. Don't pull back. Follow your training and do these three things in this order. First thing, and immediately, power to idle. Next, the roll pointer at the top shows that you are banked to the left. 
Roll the wings until the two pointers are aligned. That moves the lift vector so that it, once again, opposes the gravity vector. All that's left is to gently ease the nose back up to the horizon. Okay, here's the order again. Power to idle, and almost simultaneously, roll the wings level. Finally, ease the nose up to straight and level flight. Here's the other scenario. This attitude indicator shows that your nose high. Again, the dot in the center is all you have to look at to determine this. If you have time, a glance at the airspeed indicator will show that airspeed is dwindling. You're moving towards stall territory, so act quickly. Add power and almost simultaneously push the yoke or stick forward to lower the nose to the horizon. Then, and only then, level the wings to complete the recovery. Whether you're nose high or nose low, these two procedures are really pretty simple. There are only three steps. Just remember that when you're nose low, wings level first. When you're nose high, wings level last. Pass your written test and your check ride with Gold Seal, the Internet's number one ground school. Take a free test drive today and see how much fun learning to fly can be at onlinegroundschool.com.